like 2024, how did we get here? I don't know, the time just been passing by. I can honestly say that. Um, I was just sitting back thinking today about like, not even how I started rapping. It's more or less about where I am now with making music and trying to make sure that what I say when it come across does it make sense? Does it matter? You know, do the words matter? Do your lyrics still matter? Does the concept still matter? And what I'm doing is it moving people, is it making them say I'm locked in and I want to continue, like, you know, listening to me make music or whatever. And sometimes I find more joy in helping other people create because I can create so fast. Sometimes I create so fast and I don't even share it. So, I'm gonna just start off with Blissful. So, I'm making a climb three right now. And a few years ago, maybe it's been longer than a few. I'm gonna say probably at least a good 10 to 12 years back. Um, I was documenting everything I did from probably like 1998 up until 2000. 11, 12, maybe something like that. So at least like in the last 10 years, I kind of stopped doing it um, because somebody was telling me about like, why was I documenting it? And um, I showed them the actual footage of what I was like creating. And I saw Kanye had a documentary about everything a couple months ago. And I'm just saying to myself, like, you know, a lot of stuff, I was like an early adopter. I did a lot of stuff earlier than a lot of people did. A lot of my friends was early adopters. As far as a lot of stuff, like people that I grew up with or that I met along the way was throwing parties, they was promoters, uh, they was DJing, they rapped, they sung, you know, they made clothes, they did some kind of thing. And so for me, I always was good with anything like that you had to put your brain to your mind to and create writing, you know. Um, anything music wise even creative creative like design and stuff and coming up with ideas or marketing plans all of that kind of stuff i've always been good at it but it wasn't always like about me and what i learned like over the years is that people not necessarily use you but they get the information that they need and they kind of move on so i was talking to this guy when i was going to get some stuff from one of the um, spots that i get the wholesale items when i'm creating the clothes or whatever and uh, he was telling me how people or people that he knew would throw him for a loop and send him somewhere that he didn't really need to go or ask for a specific amount of money and saying they got to go through this person and that person. And basically he was saying that he needed to cut the middleman out. And I was explaining to him how once I wasn't in a group anymore, I learned how to cut the middleman out. I learned a lot about it when I was in a group, but I learned even more being out the group um and it's not to say that being in one didn't teach me a lot i learned hella stuff with being in one but outside of it i had to learn how to move faster record faster work faster and keep up with everybody but i do everything in my own way and so when i was creating the song blissful at first i was like i'm gonna make the concept real deep and i'm gonna make it so that you know, people got to really think and kind of find their way through it or whatever. Because I feel like a lot of times when I create, people try to pinpoint and try to put like little pieces to the puzzle together. Like, it's impossible for the way that I write or the way that I create. You'll never be able to figure out the way that I try to convey a verse or whatever or what person and tense in terms I'm speaking of, right? So when I was making Blissful... The idea, the real song, or the original way was this, I'm never going back. So never going back means like I'm never going back to anything that I did in the past. Once the past is done, it's done. I like to rap in retrospect a lot of times because retrospect gives truth and I don't have to really change the story up. I can keep everything exactly the way that it was and because it previously existed, that means it's etched in stone in time that that's what it was. And so I always have been able to maintain the true listeners, the people who really fool with me, the people who really respect what I do. 
And I've been able to do that for so long because I got so many embedded things into my brain that I hold them in places for when it's the right time or something is supposed to work or works better with it than to give it all the people all at one time, right? So while I was making Blissful, aka Never Going Back, I said that I'm never going back and I'm going to leave everybody right where they at. Like, that's basically how I feel. It's not to say that I feel like I'm some supreme being or I feel like I'm better than anybody. No, what I'm saying is I'm never going back. So meaning I'm never going down the ladder. Like, I'm climbing. I'm on the climb three. I had climb one, climb two, climb three. And if you notice, with every album to climb, I kind of climb further from the darkness. And my goal was always to get out the basement move further and further up as I climb. So I try to use the climb as a way to climb from what's holding you back, you know, move out of mediocrity, always find a better way to do something, you know, challenge yourself, put yourself in a better position. So, you know, I never wanted to be the type of artist that's trying to teach and be all about, you know, trying to show you, you know, teach you these lessons or whatever. Like, they used to criticize Nas for being a teacher or whatever, but he didn't ask for that. He kind of assumed the position because he was given so much knowledge in the rap. So you can't deny the greatness that comes out of that. But I put my failures in my music, you know. Even it's sprinkled into what I do, even with social media. Like, I might not necessarily tell you everything, like all the messed up pieces, but I give you parts of my mind that exists, I give you exactly how I feel about being like the Scorpio, the sign that I'm in. Even the irony that, you know, I'm born the same day as Diddy and I see all the crazy stuff that people post and say about him, but for a long period of time, like we idolize certain people and now that all these things come out, you know, you gotta look at it in your own life, right? People ridicule you, they criticize you for like everything that you do or little things that you do but when I started to look at it, and you look at different groups of people, you got to look at the people who keep the group together, the people who gel and make sure stuff always happening and it's always moving in a forward position. And I think that's the way that I used to look at like Diddy. I used to look at him as like the gel to anything that Bad Boy was connected to or the other artist was, but I didn't really understand. And I can't ever judge or put somebody in that position and say like, you know, what's true, what's not true, that's not my that's not my business or whatever. And I treat everybody the same way. So while I was making this song, this before I even um reached out to one of my homeboys and uh it took one of my other homeboys to FaceTime me with one of my, my friends that I kinda lost touch of or lost touch with and I reached out to him because he lost somebody in his family, so you know I said, I'm going to reach out to him. So my old page get locked out. I reach out to him. Nothing happened. Get my new page. Then I really didn't know what his page was, but I could see it here and there. So I'm like, man, this is crazy. So somebody hit me like, yo, um, what's such and such number? And I gave it to him. I said, I hope it's the still, number, the still the right number. But I wasn't even sure if it's the right number, but I still gave it without right. So... As I'm sitting there waiting and watching a basketball game, I get a phone call, but it's a FaceTime. So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm getting tired. I don't really know if I should answer this FaceTime. So I rapped about it a little bit on um, Summer is Mine or whatever, and it's the last song. So I was talking about one of my homeboys that I basically lost touch with, but it was really nothing. Like, I had kids. He moved to a different state. And then basically when he moved to a different state, it's not that we lost touch because I had been going to the town that he lived in here and there, uh, but it's been a long time since i actually been there, and uh, we were just playing phone tag, and then my number changed, his number changed, so things was happening, but it was just like, it was no forward movement in a situation, so I'm glad my homeboy really FaceTimed my other homeboy that I hadn't been in touch with, and we was just back on there, not to say it's exactly the same, it was a little bit different, because we ain't been talking to each other in years, but when you really cool with somebody or y'all really got a bond or the people that you really around set like a precedence that say like we really crew it don't matter how much time elapsed or how much time separated you or moved you away from them 
it really put me right back where I, it started making me say like, yo, I wouldn't be in a position that I probably in now because he was rolling with me everywhere I was going. And I'm looking at where he at now. And I believe that he was going to be where he is too. So it's kind of like, yo, at the end of the day, like, I don't want nobody that I'm around or nobody that I'm with to ever go back. Like, don't go back to what you used to do. Don't go back to what people want you to be. Yo, keep climbing. Keep climbing forward. No matter what it's going to be. Y'all criticize uh, people for, you know, little small and missteps or whatever, but... It's always the people with all these opinions that's not moving that got all of these, like, uh, superficial opinions about everything. Like, the people that do the least have the most opinions. Like, for me, I don't even want to talk about people's albums and stuff. Like, when somebody asks me, don't ask me about, like, an album about gutter. Don't ask me about an album, like, what I think of it. Like, they are, I'm not even, I don't even know how to rank them because most of the time I'm either on them. Or I'm watching them create them. Or sometimes I'm like the executive producer. Like, for real. Like, people be asking me, well, what's your favorite album? Or what's, what album you think the greatest of all time? Do you tell them? And then they trying to come and tell you their opinion about why they think that they don't agree with you. Like, yo, don't ask me if you don't want the real honest answer or opinion. Or I don't think that deeply into it, yo. Like, just appreciate the art. The things that people are giving. It ain't just about me. Like, yo, we had... All these super dope designers, like we had Kanye hitting us with the Yeezy stuff. They condemned Kanye. He might have said some crazy stuff or whatever it may have been. He might have done some wild things. But let's not ever forget the Yeezy shoe is one of the most classic and inspirational pieces of art that we had in our generation. And the fact that he took the same energy that Nike had with their designs, and he did that. Virgil took it a whole nother level with designer sneakers and designer pieces, designer items. That man not even around no more. But the off-white business is still moving and, and circulating. You know what I'm saying? Like, So people got to appreciate like what we got here. And that's why I say blissful in a song. I'm saying blissful like I'm happy that I'm still able to create. Even back on All Eyes On Me when I made Sign of the Times Me and Gotta Making That Album. And I'm just saying, yeah, they even talked about Jesus. They even talked a lot about LeBron. And, you know, I'm I'm feeling like KD. I should go and get the ring. Like, I'm telling you that LeBron was going to play for more years. I made this song in 2018. It's 2023. This man's still playing at 38, 39 years old. KD didn't revamp and revitalize himself multiple times on different teams. I use a lot of basketball references, but... The bliss in all of this is that you still find a way to continuously be great, continuously put out the music, continuously do the artwork, continuously market, continuously strategize, give people the gems, the jewels, tell them how to find a way to make it, tell them how to design their own things, to tell them how to align yourself with the right people. And if the DJs don't play, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like. Everybody want to know you. Everybody want to dap you up, give you all this love when they see you. But do they really give you that love when you're not around? And so when everybody send me them texts and tell me like, yo, that song was inspirational. That song was inspiring or how you put that story together or, you know, I felt that beat. Like, how'd you pick that? Or, yo, I like what you're doing with the clothes. I like what you're doing with this. I don't even need the affirmations to tell me um, to believe in myself. I don't need that from people. I just want people to know I always gave more than what I ever got back. And nobody don't owe me anything for that. 